Okay, hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the Draw Along Show. It's Wednesday. This is the first episode of two for this week, same time tomorrow if you want to tune in then. Remember the show is for all ages, all skill levels. We start out with the drawing that everybody can do together, it takes about 10 minutes, and then voila, you have a finished drawing. Isn't that cool? And then we follow it up with something like an art tip or a little art history or a who made that and things like that. It's different every single episode. And we'll finish with the animal and activity game where you in the chat can suggest for me an animal doing something funny, strange, weird, unexpected. And I will draw it for you in the little time we have remaining. Now this show is very short. It's about 26, 27 minutes long, but we cram a lot of good stuff in there. So hope you enjoy. Wanna say some uh, hellos to folks here. Let's see, Sam, hey, how you doing? Hi, Kevin, nice to see you. And Steven and Cheryl and Clever and Bailey and Bliss, thank you for joining me. By the way, if you're watching over on YouTube or Twitter, just be aware that I'm following the chat over on Behance and that is be.net slash Adobe Live, okay? Now you've, you can continue watching the show wherever you like. If you're on Twitter or YouTube, that's fine. But if you want to talk to me, if you want to make suggestions for the Animal and Activity Game, if you want to ask questions during the show, head on over to Behance so I can read them. All right, folks. Well, you know, it's been uh, an interesting little break there. We had a little Thanksgiving holiday here where I live, so there were no draw along shows last week. Apologize for that. Um, but we're back in action. Uh, speaking of Thanksgiving, what did the turkey say to the computer? Google, Google, Google. <laughs> you thought that maybe after Thanksgiving the jokes would get better. Sorry that you were mistaken. And now it is time to draw. Okie dokie, you need something to draw with. Grab yourselves a pencil, a pen, a marker, a crayon or a nice turkey bone that you can dip in some ketchup and draw all over the place. Maybe dip it in some cranberry sauce. That might be nice. Um, you can draw on your parents' favorite carpet, their wall, whatever. I'm not gonna judge, but they might. Uh, to do these drawings, remember you have to be able to do three very simple things and they are a straight line, a zigzag, and a curvilinear line. Okay, now that could be an S curve or a C curve, could be a shallow one could be a little tighter like that. You can do these, I know you can. And that is why we can draw together and everyone winds up with a decent drawing at the end. That's how this show works. Today's drawing, we're gonna start with a horizontal line like that, okay? I'll zoom in a little bit so everybody can see clearly. Uh, how long is that line, Kyle? Well, on your paper, maybe about half an inch or maybe like, you know, a centimeter, something like that. Um, could be a little longer, two centimeters, could be an uh, inch and a half, I don't know. Draw it a comfortable size for you. Don't draw too tiny though. It's gonna be hard to get the little details in there, okay? Um, if, if you're looking at a clock, and I want you to imagine the uh, hour hand is facing the seven, okay? So six is at the very bottom, and then a little to the left is a seven. That's the angle we're gonna draw now. Check it out, we're gonna go like that, okay? So it's like six o'clock is down here and we're swinging over to that seven o'clock. How long is that line? Well, it's about, ooh, I don't know, half the length of the first line or maybe slightly longer, okay? Good to do these comparative measurements, that's what we do. Hey, nice to see you, Z, thank you for joining us. Hello, hello, hello. Um, by the way, Z's real name is Rick. Not sure why it always says Z, but this is the thing about the chat. You don't know what's going on. Umicorn, how you doing? We're not drawing any of those crazy storks today, Umicorn. Sorry to disappoint you. All right, we're gonna draw a straight line that goes back this way. Now notice that this line moves back further than the first line we drew, right? So the first one is here, the second one is traveling back further, okay. Now, right here on this diagonal line, I want you to draw a little scoopy line like this. Scoop it up like that, okay? That's it little scoopy. Okay, and then here we're going to start drawing with a, another line that draw, uh, goes up at an angle. And if you think about a clock, I would say for this one, maybe you're doing like um, 11 p.m., you know, 11 o'clock. Why well, would I say p.m.? I, uh, listen, I've had a long day, folks, and not enough coffee. Ay, 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 ay. All right, now I want you to take this line. I want you to skip over a space, okay? This is how much space I'm gonna give you. About to there, make a little dot. 
See that right there? And here we're gonna draw a line that is gonna come up past that first line right to here. I'm gonna make another dot for you. Bam, like so. And we're gonna connect those, okay? Everybody good so far? Now we're gonna angle down this way towards like I'd say a four o'clock, okay? Alrighty. We're gonna skip up again and we're gonna draw out that way. And you might be wondering, what on earth is this? What are we drawing? Well, you'll see in a second here, because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw some lines from here to here, okay? But they're all going to be spaced apart, all right? And I'm gonna do the same thing down this way. So to practice, because this is curved, that might be a little difficult, we're gonna start with the straight ones, okay? So imagine that, don't draw this part, I just wanna show you. Imagine I'm drawing a line straight down this way, okay? But instead of actually drawing that line, I'm drawing lines that come off it like that. Okay, so what, let's try this together. We're gonna to start here, we're gonna go one, all right? And then we're just gonna keep going. Two, three, four, five. We're doing five of these. One, two, three, four, five, okay? And then right here, we're gonna do the same thing, but it's gonna be like a curve, okay? Check it out. One, two, three, four, like that. All right, so these go straight down, these go in a curve. And right from this corner, I want you to scoot back a notch and do this. See that? C curve, it's a shallow one, right? People probably figured out what we're doing now. Now this line, we're gonna extend down to the bottom of this one here. We're gonna go down like so, all right? And then we're gonna take this guy right here and we're gonna do one more but it's gonna be angled slightly in, so we're kind of moving in that direction. All righty. Now, the next step is from here, I'm gonna go out again, just like this line, see that? And now I want you to imagine we're moving in a little bit of a circle like this way, okay? So here we go. Boom, 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 okay? We stop right about there. Notice that we have not gone further left than this line. We've gone outside in a little curve like so. Other side, same deal. Symmetry, right? We love symmetry in these drawings. Okay. By the way, notice all my lines aren't exactly the same length and all that kind of stuff. Don't worry about that. Right here, make a shallow V. One, two, like that. Shallow V, okay? and then draw a line down. So that turns it into what kind of looks like a long letter Y that's been squished at the top, the two diagonal bits. Now from here, more of these little guys. Okay, check it out. We're gonna go in this kind of a pattern. All right, see what I'm doing here? So boom, 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 and boom. And a boom, 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 and boom. Okay, and from here, okay, right underneath this guy, we're gonna draw a line down and it's gonna be shorter than this line, okay? Don't make it as long as this line here. Down we go, and stop right about there. Same here, down we go, stop right about there. All right, actually I'm gonna bring those in just a hair, sorry about that, there we go, that looks a little better, okay? And then a little boop and bop, just like that. Oh my gosh, look how quickly we drew a llama. We're almost done, guys, just the back legs. Check it out, we go down at a slight angle, not as long, and then like so, and another, down like this, and like so. And that's it, that's it. You just drew a llama. That took about eight minutes. What do you think, gang? Um, let's see, yep, cartoon goddess guessed it, alpaca, Rick had guessed it. Maybe a giraffe had said, Kevin, that was a good guess early on, I would say for sure. Um, Bailey, what's up? Nice to see you. Uh, a salty sea llama, says Steve. Haha, <laughs> very good. Yes, we haven't had him for a while, have we? Um, there is a bit about llamas at the beginning of the Monty Python movie, uh, The Search for the Holy Grail, yes, and it's very funny, and it just keeps on going, and it's the opening credits are very funny, and people need to make sure and read them. Great movie. Uh, Ruth, how you doing? Thanks for joining us. All right, folks, well, that is our little draw along. Remember, you can always customize these drawings. What does that mean? Well, 
could give them a little background, right? Maybe we're somewhere in Chile, right? Or Peru. Where do they have llamas? Is it Peru? All right, so you got some mountains in the background there. That's one thing you could do. All right, or just put some grass there. Or whatever you want, okay? So there is the draw along for today. A llama! Are you ready for a little art tip? I know you are. All right, let's check it out. Today's art tip. Today's art tip is about when you're drawing characters and inventing little comic characters and faces and things like that. And this is a lot of what we do in our time. We like to make up little people and faces and characters and whatnot. I just wanted to show you how easy it is to try and make different characters. Sometimes you have a cast of characters, right? You're creating a little story and you have uh, maybe three people who are friends, but you wanna draw in a very simple way. What are some things you can do to keep these people easy to identify from one another and make it easier on yourself to draw them so that everything works out? Well, I wanted to show you this thing that I like to do, which is simply this. All right, so here's, let's just do like a sort of oval here for a head shape, all right? It's a little lopsided, but we don't care. Um, now, if this is my center line, a very, very easy and simple thing to do to keep your character separate is to do spacing that is different vertically and horizontally between the main features. And those are nose, eyes, and mouth, okay? So, eyes nose mouth if i move the mouth up or down move the eyes closer together or further apart move the nose up or down i get different characters so check it out this person's going to have eyes out here nose right here and a mouth down there okay and let's take that same character slide it over here and all we do is we just change that spacing okay let's do eyes close together okay nose down here and mouth off to the side like that okay totally different character same number of lines all right let's do it again this time i'm going to move things a little lower for the eyes, okay? Start the nose up here and just do a bigger nose like that. And then for the mouth, I'm gonna do a really small one. All right, one, two, three. Totally different characters. We haven't even talked about hairstyles, what the ears look like, things like that. We haven't bothered with eyebrows, none of that nonsense. What we're trying to do is just establish what is the basic relationship between these main features. And by simply pushing or pulling in any direction, up, down, left, right, okay, and deciding what the spacing is between those three areas, eyes, bottom of the nose, okay, and the mouth, you have different characters, okay? And this can make, a, make it really easy for you to build up this little vocabulary, this character vocabulary, if you like, um, for the stuff that you're doing. So if I were to take this a step further, right, I would start playing with head shapes, all right? So maybe instead this guy, I'm gonna take him and we're gonna do this. We're gonna make more of a sort of a square shape, okay? And we're just gonna have hair at the top that's little dots like this, all right? But same basic proportions as before, all right? And so I decide, okay, this is this guy and I like that square, so I'll carry that through with the ears, right? There we go, there's one person. And then what I can do is I can continue to play around with head shape, right? With maybe this person's features, right? And so I'm gonna do more of sort of a down and up kind of a shape, okay? And then a bunch of nice curly hair around this person. Same features, let's just take them and, and just move them over here like that, pop, there you go, all right? So you get the idea, right? This is how you do it. Very easy, simple way. Now, of course, you can get as many details as you want. You can change up the style, but this goes for anything that you're doing if you're just trying to keep these characters separate and easy to read, and the audience will be able to tell who's who as well if you maintain that same kind of spacing. So there's a little tip for you. 
Um, what would be an adorable Christmas ornament? I'm not sure. The llama? I guess you're talking about the llama. <laughs> That's a comment from Dina. Um, alrighty, so there's your art tip for the day. Keep that in mind. Keep your characters separate from one another and make it easy for yourself so you're not struggling. All right. Next on our list is the old animal and activity game. And to do that, we, oops, pardon me. There is the alarm for appreciation station. Well, well, well. Today we are appreciating our good friend in the chat, Cheryl. Cheryl, thank you for watching the show. Now, quick story about you. Um, I remember that one time you tried to start an art academy for turkeys. Now, everybody thought you were crazy. They said that's never going to work. And sure enough, um, there in that first uh, week or so, the feathers were flying, paint was being eaten, and it was a real mess. And um, I thought, you know, I believed in your vision, but I thought this one maybe isn't going to work out until you showed them some paintings by Audubon. Bingo. It was the source of inspiration that mattered. You had been showing them Rembrandt and you'd been showing them, you know, Degas and uh, all these brilliant painters from um, back in the day who didn't paint birds. They painted people, right? And as soon as you showed them some birds, well, they thought, ah, this interests me and I want to make some of that art. So these turkeys really got really good and they painted and painted. And um, I remember after that gallery show, I stayed in touch with a few of them, but then uh, eventually I lost some touch with uh, all of them and I don't know where they are now. Hope they had some good careers. Wanted to ask if you're still in touch with any of those turkeys. But anyway, great idea. And uh, I really applaud your unique vision. And uh, we are appreciating you today, Cheryl. And also thank you for watching the Draw Along Show. Now, time for us to do the animal and activity game. What is that? You have to suggest for me an animal doing something funny, strange, weird, unexpected, bizarre, and I will draw it for you in the time we have remaining, which is about nine minutes. Okay, well, maybe eight minutes. Uh, so what have we done in the past? Let's see, we've done a surfing monkey. We have done a bat singing opera. We have done a pogo stick jumping alligator. Pretty creative there. How about a koala cooking a stew? These are just some of the things that we have drawn together, and it's all thanks to your suggestions in the chat. So today we need some new ones, some fresh ones, and let's see what we can draw. I'll get my light blue uh, color here for sketching, and there it is, and we're ready to go. Now, some suggestions are coming in. Oh, I see one right away that I want to do, Misty. Frankenstein dressing up as Santa, playing Santa. I love it. I'll read some others out to you. Um, Steve has suggested a reindeer in a big comfy chair, relaxing, already in a festive mood, I see. Uh, Kevin has also suggested a lion on a bicycle. Very nice, very nice. Um, and Cheryl, by the way, is catching us up on the situation with the turkeys. She is not in touch with the turkeys, unfortunately, but that's okay. Still, they learned a lot from you and I know that they're very happy. I'm sure they are. Uh, like I said, Misty, I have to say that is a really fun idea. So I'm going to do this. It's Frankenstein playing Santa. Let's try this out. All right. So we're going to have Frankenstein with that long head shape, right? We're just talking about head shapes a second ago, weren't we? Just talking about it. Make sure we get those bolts in his neck. Right, and it's gonna be looking at us under those heavy brows. We'll have that Santa hat just kind of falling off the back there. Of his head there like that. So we'll do like this. Give it a nice fold. And we're going to have him 
Walking with a, a present under his arm. How about that? Okay. We'll have a bit of the the ribbon sticking out there for the full effect so we know what's going on. Okay. And let's get that collar up a bit higher. I guess we won't see the bolts if I do that, but that's okay. We don't need to see them. We know it's Frankenstein. Put a nice scar across the forehead there for where uh, Dr. Frankenstein put in the Abby Normal brain for all you young Frankenstein fans out there. Okay. Get this coat up here, flaring out, okay. It's funny to give him some little skinny legs. I'm gonna make that box stick out more. He's gotta really lift his arm out. He's got to have those big Frankenstein shoes, boots, whatever, right? Okay. Going to have to shrink this guy since we're running out of room. There we go. Isn't it great to be able to do that so easily in, in a digital environment? Oh my gosh, yes it is. I'll throw that leg back a little farther. Okay, let's knock that back. Grab our dark blue. And let's go to town with the line work. Here we go, one, new layer. There's that big Frankenstein brow. And let's wrap that scar around there. And here's our Santa Claus hat right there see how handy a sketch is boy I would be lost without it right now you don't have to stick to it like it's the law of the land or anything okay remember that but it is so helpful and will make the the rest of the drawing just kind of fall right into place you know drawing without a sketch Whew. I mean I've done it I have done it, but I'll tell you, sure is tough. I don't know where you're going next, you know? Everything's a kind of a guessing game. But with a sketch, I know where I'm going. A little road map, you know? Really helps. Okay, keeping my eye on the time here. We are down to the wire, folks. 
Can we do it? Can we do it? Well, we've done it before. I know we can do it. I'm confident. We have done it before. And a one and a two. And here are those big old boots. And we just skated through and made it. Holy cow, folks. Well, thank you for watching the Draw Along show. Remember, same time tomorrow, we can all hang out and do more of this together. So take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Please remember to be kind. And I will say ciao for now.